All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome uh, to the press conference where we are launching our new Ignite Workforce Infrastructure Initiative. This is a really exciting day for our region as we look at some of the greatest challenges facing the region. The number one challenge is the ability for our companies to attract, retain, and develop high quality talent. As we're challenged with the ability to attract, retain, uh, and develop high quality talent, we know we need uh, to really work on um, amplifying our collaborative efforts, looking at a systematic approach to connect all of this together. So uh, we've had, we have the great opportunity to present lots of different partners today that will speak about the importance of this initiative uh, and how collaboration will transform the way that we do this in the future. So it gives me a great pleasure to introduce our Vice President of Workforce and Talent uh, here with the Fargo, Moorhead West Fargo Chamber, Mason Radmacher. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, as Shannon said, my name is Mason Rademacher. I serve as the Vice President of Workforce and Talent for the Fargo Moorhead West Fargo Chamber of Commerce. Uh, there you go. Sorry, guys. No, you're totally fine. Anything for the news, I guess. Um, thank you all for being here. We, we tremendously and greatly appreciate it, as well as thank you so much for joining us at the event prior for the Chamber's annual celebration. Um, and we are extremely excited to be launching Ignite FMWF to our community here today. Shannon and I and many of the individuals that will be speaking following me truly believe that it will be transformational in the way in which our education, business, nonprofit, job seekers, and so many more sectors from across our community all connect together. At the core of it, Ignite truly is the combination between two extremely critical elements. One is an extremely robust technology platform, and the other is an extremely intentional and strategic relationship development strategy for our community. All, um, all members across our region coming and pulling and working together so that we can address the most pressing need that we're all facing, that of workforce and talent. As a comprehensive, streamlined, and systematic approach to addressing our regional workforce and talent needs, Ignite will truly further career exploration and awareness drive business connection, and develop our future and current talent pipelines as we build this regional robust economic workforce. Through multiple key features, Ignite will provide opportunities for students, job seekers, and employers alike through some of the following features that I'll list off here. Linked recruitment, skill building, and career navigation efforts all into one collaborative and combined system. More than 1,200 video career cards to aid in student and job seeker career exploration. A community-based live job board to develop, developed, excuse me, to highlight and help fill our regional open positions. Creating business to community to education connections by offering opportunities for our businesses and individuals to engage directly with students in the classrooms. Resume building tools for students and job seekers and individuals across our community alike to build their own personal portfolios, a robust library of industry-developed comprehensive training and education opportunities that badge to students' resumes upon completion, and so, so much more. Now we understand that we can have the greatest technology, but all of that means nothing if we don't have a team of active players, participants, and champions working alongside of us. And so you can look to the chamber as we launch new relationship development strategy efforts. Specifically, look to the Chamber to launch a new Regional Workforce Advisory Council pulling together key and critical community partners from across our region to be having these difficult conversations about how we can continue to set ourselves and our community apart from those across the country. As well as look to us to develop multiple industry-specific advisory groups in an attempt to better align our education and industry partners together. Now I have the pleasure to introduce our next speaker here this morning, or this afternoon, excuse me. Uh, I'll now turn the podium over to Sandy Piatz, the Director of Community Program Management and the Fargo Site Leader for Microsoft, as well as the former board chair for the chamber and the current Feeling Our Future uh, uh, chair. So uh, that's a mouthful, if you can imagine. So <laughs> thanks so much, Sandy, for being here to talk a little bit more about how this is truly a private-public partnership initiative. Thank you, Mason. As you mentioned, I'm Sandy Piatz with the Fargo Site Leader at Microsoft, and it's truly an honor to be here. I'm representing on behalf of the outgoing chair for the chamber and also the current chair for Fueling Our Future. 
Fueling Our Future is a joint initiative between the Chamber of Commerce and also the Economic Development Corp. And we worked, we work on big catalytic initiatives that are going to make a change in this community. And workforce is one of those key initiatives that's extremely important to this community. And it's why we've invested in Ignite. And we're extremely extremely excited about what Ignite can bring to this community and how it can bring us all together from businesses in the community to our educational partners to really make a change in connecting our talent to workforce opportunities. And it's for this reason that Fueling Our Future has invested in Unite, in Ignite. And uh, it's important to Microsoft workforces. And so because of that, I now have the honor to welcome Taya Spellhog, our TechSpark tech manager for North Dakota for Microsoft Philanthropies to the podium. Taya. <laughs> Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. As Sandy said, um, my name is Taya Spellhaug. I am the TechSpark manager for North Dakota. And um, you're probably wondering what TechSpark is. Well, it's a civic program that was, um, it was probably four years ago that we launched this program. And it was our president at Microsoft that said, we need to do more for rural economic development. And so he chose six locations around the United States, and luckily Fargo was one of those states. And so we've been making economic investments into rural America since, you know, 2017. And when I met Shannon, um, it was less than a year ago, and um, I, I just immediately saw her passion for workforce development and for this area. And we started having a lot of conversations and the more we talked, the more I realized how well aligned her vision was with the TechSpark initiative. You know, looking at workforce development, look at skilling, bringing private and public partnerships together. And that's what Ignite is all about. It is really a catalyst to collaboration. You know, when we look at um, the chamber, you know, we have Fargo, Moorhead, West Fargo. It's about bringing people together and that is what Ignite is going to do. It is going to bring education. It's going to bring uh, businesses and job seekers and nonprofits together in order to solve the workforce shortage that we have in our, in our region. And I'm just incredibly excited. We are thrilled to invest. We made an investment into the Ignite program. And we are uh, you know, incredibly excited to see where this all goes. And I'm thrilled that we have Shannon and this program in our region. So thank you very much. And now it's my job to introduce uh, Dr. Brandon Lunak, who is the superintendent of Moorhead Area Public Schools. Okay. Well, I was asked to uh, speak on why our commitment uh, to Ignite and the Chamber of Commerce. And, and I will tell you, back in 2019, our community supported a bond uh, with 76% uh, support for $110 million. We're in the process of building a new high school and a uh, career academy. And as a result of that, we're going through an educational transformation ourselves, and we're really going to focus on personalized learning and uh, trying to meet students uh, where they are at. And um, we're going to move to an academy model with pathways underneath each academy so we can identify where students uh, have their passions and uh, trying to connect those passions to either the world of work or to a two-year or four-year uh, path into higher education. But I think what, uh, what we are challenged with in Moorhead when we have class sizes of over 500 is how do you create a network to where we can provide a capstone opportunity for those juniors or seniors? And when uh, Shannon presented this Ignite program or this, this idea, it just kind of took a large um, stressor off my mind knowing that we could do something for our ninth and 10th graders to get them exposed with those career cards, get them identified with a career, and then for that uh, junior and senior year, really apply that to a capstone type experience. And boy, having a, a program like this that can connect us to the private sector to help us with those uh, internships or, or um, uh, 
capstone type activities is critically important for us to ensure that we're doing the right thing for our students. And uh, that's why we are excited to be a part of this and uh, we're looking uh, really down the road two to three years to make sure that as our new facilities come online we are set up for these capstone activities and thanks to Shannon and the Ignite program we think we have a mechanism to finally uh, coordinate and connect uh, to the private sector as well as giving our kids an opportunity in the uh, freshman and sophomore years. So I'm just excited for the opportunity and uh, if you can imagine being a um, a career um, a career coach or a um, uh, we'll call it a career coach but we have a we have a staff member on on staff right now who was told about this as well and uh, he's extremely excited to get to work and get going on this but can you imagine being one of those individuals in our district and trying to plan capstone experiences for 550 kids and not have a connection to the private sector that was what kept me up at night and I normally sleep very good at night I'll make that very clear but that that did take a major stressor off of us and when we have folks on board that just makes it that much easier to make sure that we're doing the right thing for kids and getting them connected to the private sector so we're excited as a district to be uh, a part of this uh, in the infancy stages and uh, hopefully we'll continue to refine this as we go and uh, before too long this thing will just be a well-oiled machine and out we go and we'll get the kids connected to the right folks and we'll go from there but without further ado I think I'll introduce uh, Dr. Corey Steiner to the to the podium. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Dr. Corey Steiner. I'm the superintendent for the Northern Cass School District. Uh, we're located 25 miles northwest of Fargo. Uh, we have an address of Hunter, North Dakota, but if you've ever had a chance to be to our school, you will notice that it is in, surrounded by cornfields. Um, we actually serve six communities in the rural area, and that is Arthur, Grandin, Gardner, Hunter, Erie, and Argusville. Uh, I'm also proud to say as of this morning when I checked our enrollment, we have the highest enrollment we've ever had in the history of our school district. We think part of that is due to a transformation that's in year four in our district, and that is a move to personalized competency-based learning. We believe it allows big school opportunities in a small school environment. We have one goal in our school district that we assess whether we're successful or not, and that is to have kids graduate choice ready. Uh, we don't care if they are our military, post-secondary, or career. We simply want every learner to have the opportunity to explore their first choice and to be able to have that first choice when they leave our building. Learners in our district don't have grades and we're in the process of eliminating grade levels. And we're doing that so we can complete a full redesign of the learning experience for our learners. We're believers that the junior year needs to allow learners to engage in multiple job shadows both virtually and in person off-site and we believe the senior year is a year where learners don't need to be on our site for a majority of the day but actually should be placed in internships throughout our local communities and throughout the metro area over the past three years we've had multiple learners engage in paid internships in the metro area and in some of our local communities uh, we've had HVAC uh, welders mechanics human resource and marketing, uh, and a lot more that I, I could go, and it's been very successful. But like any rural community, we have limited connections with the amount of businesses and the opportunities in our small areas. So today is a, a really exciting day. Uh, today, and when we learned from Shannon about Ignite, we saw something that could scale our opportunity to directly connect the business community to our educators and our learners in the rural areas. And as we commit to making sure every learner has those experiences to be choice ready, Ignite is going to change the way we engage with educators in the metro area. I think before, and not on purpose, the rural schools were often left out of this conversation because of the distance between there and Fargo. Ignite has changed that. We're no longer left out of the conversation. We are now sitting at the table for that conversation. 
Uh, it's going to provide our learners in the rural areas with something that they truly deserve, and that is the opportunity to live a life that's fulfilled and happy because they were able to develop their agency through a platform and through a collaboration that has never been done before in the state of North Dakota. Uh, we're excited, we're thrilled for our learners, for our adults, and for our rural communities for what's going to become a game-changing moment going forward. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Denise Jonas. Denise is the director for the Cass County Career and Technical Education Center here in the metro area. Thank you, Dr. Steiner, and thank you everyone for giving me this opportunity. My name is Denise Jonas, Director of Career and Technical Education for Cass County, and I have the, um, I'm living my dream uh, job for sure. I have, this is my passion, is career education. I tell everyone the whole purpose in um, completing high school and going on to advanced education is to live your dream job. Um, but what is that dream job? And sometimes in my age um, group, we had a tendency to explore in college. So our goal at this point in the transforming of education is to give our students experiences. So my role as Director of Career and Technical Education for Cass County, I have a great fortune to work for multiple school districts. I work with Dr. Steiner at Northern Cass and Morgan Fornis at Central Cass, um, Superintendent Saletti and Dr. Gandhi in Fargo and West Fargo. And that helps me see this group of educational systems trying to work together and also at times trying to compete against each other. Now we jump across the river and we have Dr. Lunick over in the state of Minnesota and the schools that are in the Minnesota area. And we are a region, we are a community working together for the betterment of our students. But we're also challenged with the fact that um, we have 2,000 businesses that are a part of the Chamber of Commerce, which is fantastic. But we also have around 8,000 9 through 12 students. So if you do the math and you have 8,000 students that would like an experience and we have 2,000 businesses and if everyone just has one experience, we have a little challenge on our hands. So what I've experienced in working with our career advisors is really this importance of experiential learning, job experiences really help our students know what do we want to do. Um, maybe I think I want to be in medical and I go do a job experience and I find out, wow, that was more than I expected or less than I wanted. So I want to try another experience. Um, what we've been challenged in the K-12 system is finding a most efficient and effective way to make that connection. Our career advisors are helping students in the school. So having the time to cultivate 2,000 job experiences is just not a part of their day. Ignite has opened the door for that connection to take place. And so now we have an interface that will allow our career counselors, our teachers, our students, our parents to go to one location and say, hey, there's a business out here that says I can come and do a job shadow or maybe even maybe more advanced internship experiences. Um, but in the past, what we've struggled with is that interface to make that connection. Um, it might be a Microsoft. It might just be Taya. It might be one person. It might be the company. It might be the big business. It, now it opens a door for the small business. So what I think Ignite is going to do is take the community that, that we have and create that interface for our students and our parents and our um, adult learners um, and move it from a computer to an application on your phone and you will be able to explore a career everywhere. And the job cards will create awareness. It compares colleges. It creates an opportunity to see how much education you need. It tells you how much that job will pay when you finish your schooling. Um, and it also recruits students to our local community, which many of the products we use right now, they do not always talk about Marvin. They talk about this you know, generic company around the world. So I'm excited for Ignite. I think this is the game changer. We're trying to transform education. We want it experiential. We want students to have career experiences so that they can make informed decisions when they leave high school on their journey. And this is the, the starting point for us. And so I'm grateful to the chamber and fueling our future, the partnerships in the community. And I'm just ready to rock this with our next step with uh, career education in Cass County and Moorhead and the communities beyond our region. So thank you, everyone. And now I'm going to turn it over to Chris Barda, um, who is the CEO of Marvin. 
if I got that right, Director of Operations. Uh, almost, Director yeah, of yeah, Operations. Not quite the CEO, but thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Chris Barta. I'm the Senior Director of Operations for the three manufacturing facilities here in Fargo and West Fargo for Marvin. Um, Marvin is a fourth generation, family owned, purpose driven company and we make windows and doors primarily for the residential and light commercial market. We have manufacturing facilities in, in eight states around, around the country and our headquarters are in, in World, Minnesota. In Fargo, when you couple the three manufacturing facilities that, you know, that I support, and you add our research and development center in West Fargo, and you add Tecton Products, which is another Marvin company. We have over a million square feet and, under, and over 1,600 employees in this area. So the Fargo-Moorhead area, West Fargo, if Bernie's here, um, uh, is important to us. Um, we currently have uh, growth initiatives going on. We, ha I mean, we have two construction sites going, you know, at this moment. So. Uh, growth is important, but hiring is important as well. And so what I'm excited about Unite is the community-based systems approach. I like that it's bringing business and educators and individuals together under that one platform where, that we can all use. I like the technology behind the scenes to make it user-friendly for the users as well as for customers and allow us all to collaborate to get all that right information to students, to educators, to business um, t together. Um, I'm excited about the community-based job board and I like that, that it's intentionally going to connect people. Uh, I'm excited, something that Corey said, uh, we're a purpose-based company and our purpose is to imagine and create better ways of living, you know, for our customers with the products that we make, for our employees in the buildings and the jobs that we offer, but also in our communities. and. As I tie that together, we're going to do that for our students and for those people looking for jobs. So I'm excited to see where this takes takes us. In addition, I want to make a, a shout out for Shannon. I'm so impressed with your vision, the the ability to get the right people in the room because it's easy to have a picture, but then how the heck do you get everybody on board to now go forward and then execute it all? And so I'm really excited, you know, for the ignite platform as well as your leadership as we go forward. So Shannon, with that, I guess I'd like to introduce Shannon Full, see if I get this right, President, <laughs> CEO for the Fargo-Moorhead West Fargo Chamber. So as you can see, it's a very exciting day for us here in our region. It's also an exciting day as we uh, get to dream about what the future opportunities look like for our students. Uh, as we look to uh, not just a technology platform, but a true initiative around how do we truly ignite the opportunities for our future students, ignite the future workforce for our companies, and ignite a community that we all want to live, grow, and prosper in. So thank you all to our partners. This is a this is a tremendous day, and it was a lot of work. It will continue to be a lot of work. Uh, we will need to um, kind of push each other's boundaries and, and figure out. Um, some things will come easy. Some things won't come so easily. And so um, just know that you've got the commitment of the chamber, and you've got the commitment of my great team, and especially of Mason, uh, who we're so, so thrilled to have uh, leading this initiative. And we're going to do great things together. So uh, to, to everyone, let's go, and uh, let's, let's have a lot of fun fun uh, and ignite all of the possibilities for the future. Thank you. We're happy to take any questions if there's questions and, oh, is that what you were going to say? I'm no. sure that's what Mason was going to say. We're happy to take <laughs> any questions from anyone and feel free, obviously, to interview any of our, our partners here uh, today. So. so just to clarify, is this a digital platform that will be launching soon or has it already launched? So it launches today. Uh, Mason, you want to tell all the details? Yeah, it, I, Go ahead. I'll come up here really quick. So it actually just went live this morning um, or this afternoon. So at our annual celebration, um, we put little cue cards on everybody's table um, with QR codes. That signified that it had officially launched. Everyone can go onto the site now. It's completely live for individuals, uh, both job seekers and companies and individual employees within organizations as well. Best way to get onto it is just go to ignitefmwf.com and it'll direct you right on there um, and tell you more about the site, the system, and how you can leverage all of the great aspects of it. And then we'll be working with 
um, our great partners at the schools to launch this out in a rollout strategy that makes sense to them. The biggest thing that we want to do is make sure this is customized for each of our school partners, um, but also our nonprofits. So when we talk about um, new, um, new American immigrant populations, dislocated workers, recently released incarcerated, anybody that's really um, working with an agency to look for jobs will have full access to this. We were very intentional about the design of this. This is for the community, which means it's open for anybody. So um, anyone can go on and create a profile and actually start to look at the 1,200 um, online, 1,200 plus um, uh, video career cards, can do some of the 200 plus online courses for free, look at the active interactive job board. So it's open for anybody. So we would encourage you uh, to definitely go on uh, the QR code code we will share, which will make really uh, a lot easier for people to engage in it very quickly. Other questions, thoughts? Is this a specific initiative to the FM area, or has this, has this been model has this model been implemented elsewhere? Great question. There are, there are similar models around the country. Um, as you know, we're in a very competitive workforce state right now, uh, and so uh, there are initiatives like this have been launched statewide in other states. Uh, so uh, the state of Arkansas just recently launched a hundred and ten million dollar talent strategy, um, uh, and Ready for Life is what their product is or what they're using. Um, this. Ignite is, is um, unique to this area, uh, but we're looking at opportunities to continue to expand it throughout Minnesota, throughout the state of North Dakota. Um, our ideal goal is to get so that our entire state or entire region is using one systematic approach so that if we've got companies like Marvin uh, that has multiple locations throughout the Midwest, they could, could easily connect to using one utilized system. So, And top to bottom, this is pretty much built here in the FM area? Yeah, so we uh, have a technology partner that helped to build these others in other communities and other regions as well. But beyond the technology platform, um, all of the relationship strategy work, all of the work that all of these um, fine partners have done has all been done here um, in a very short amount of time. So we started this work uh, in about uh, January. Uh, yeah, in January. April. Oh, it was April. Okay, it was April. It was about April when so, we started. So started in <laughs> April. So quick tonight. turnaround. Um, couldn't have done it without um, open minds and partners that really wanted to come together to make a difference. So. Great question. So it's funded in numerous different ways. Uh, we uh, got some initial funding from Fueling Our Future uh, as, as kind of a pilot in a startup. Uh, but all of our partners also uh, contribute and invest in the platform. Uh, we've got private sector partners, uh, funding from uh, counties, from cities, uh, from school districts. So it's really, truly a public-private partnership when you think of uh, the definition of that. Public-private partnership is not just financial investment, which we have, but it's also the the human capital investment, which is really going to help carry us through, uh, uh, kind of, and get get us to that next level. So, one thing I'll note on that, just really quickly, because I don't think it was mentioned, and I don't want this to be missed, is that it's important to note that we've resourced and been able to fund this in a way to to ensure that when businesses and users are utilizing the system and the platform that there's no cost to them. So any single business, any single individual user can go on, they can build their profile, and at no point will they be um, kind of asked to pay for anything. We've resourced that in a way to ensure that there's no barrier to access or entry uh, for any organization or individual. But we will look for champion yeah. businesses to help us <laughs> underwrite yeah. the cost. Don't get us wrong. Uh, but, but to Mason's point, we didn't want cost to be a barrier for companies. We want our small companies, our entrepreneurs, our solopreneurs uh, to also be able to engage. We also want job seekers of all types and all, all kinds to be able to uh, have a profile. Uh, but this is also a tremendous way that our companies are getting their employees out doing skill-based volunteering. So on the platform, individual professionals, so all of my staff members will be able to create a profile and they will be able to identify are they willing to speak in a classroom, do a job shadow, an internship, a mentorship. Because what Dr. Denise Jonas said so well is that we need scalability. We need more and more people engaged in the career exploration opportunities, in direct connections to businesses so that we can answer the, deme the, the demand of not only our K-12 system but also our college systems here as well.